the topic is light, we thought we will have a different kind of presentation by starting in the darkness and like as it says in the Bible, let there be light and there was light. The year 2015 has been designated the International Year of Light by UNESCO. And why have we chosen 2015 is because almost a thousand years ago, a very famous Iraqi scientist by the name of Ibn al Haysan was considered to be the pioneer in the field of optics. What is light? If you ask this question to any school boy or college student, they will tell you light is a form of energy. I am not very happy with that. Light to me is a messenger. It tells you what is in front of you and what you can perceive, what you can see. That is a very important point. Over the centuries, people like Ibn al Haysan, Thomas Young, Christian Huygens, Isaac Newton, James Clark Maxwell and Albert Einstein and many other scientists have contributed towards this great topic called optics. Now, let us see what is light. Light, for a long time, even today, we get confused because there are two theories of light. One says, and this was propagated by Isaac Newton, that light is a corpuscule. Corpuscule means a small rounded body. It's like a particulate matter. Christian Huygens has proposed that light is a form of a wave. That means it travels in the form of a wave. Today, we have experiments that tell us that light sometimes behaves like a corpuscule, sometimes it behaves like a wave. So, there then comes quantum mechanics to explain the behavior of light at a particular point in time. We are very familiar with some of the properties of light. For example, when you stand in front of a mirror, you see yourself being reflected and that is called reflection. When you take a glass of water, dip a spoon or a pencil or a rod, you find it is bent. You call that refraction. After a rainy day, if you see some oil spread on the road, on the surface of a pool of water, you will see different, different colors. You call that diffraction or diffraction. One of the very common examples of diffraction today is the CD disc. You hold the disc in different directions and you will see various colors beautifully arranged in a particular order. It was in 1802 that a very important experiment by Thomas Young, a British physicist, proved that light can behave like a wave also. This is called the Young's experiment and at that time, it was a very landmark experiment because it said that light behaves like waves. Now, we have seen very often that when you see in the sea or in the river or pond, you see waves. Sometimes suddenly you will see one wave appear to be much higher than the other and sometimes the others are flat. Again it becomes high, again it becomes flat. Similarly, Thomas Young what he did was, he allowed the light to pass through a slit and captured the image on a screen in such a way that there were two images being superimposed and he found that one portion of the image was very bright, the other was dark, then again bright, again dark, so a pattern was formed. And this was exactly like two water waves when they are in the same phase. That means, when they are going up and down in the same way, 
they become more higher and so this was called constructive interference and in other places where they cancelled out one another it was called destructive interference. So, these were some of the phenomenon. Later on one more phenomenon was discovered and that is called polarization. All of us know what a Polaroid camera is or Polaroid glasses are. When you wear the Polaroid glasses, you do not see glare because the Polaroid glasses are made in such a way that they allow light traveling only in a particular direction to reach your eyes. So, it cuts off the glare. Then you have one more phenomenon, one is called interference, one is called diffraction, one is called polarization and of course, reflection and refraction. In diffraction, you can find that light bends around solid objects. That is why, if you are in a room, dark room and there is a light in an adjacent room, little of that light can come inside the room through a slight crack or something. This is called diffraction. Another landmark uh, in the field of optics was by James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish physicist who wrote down theoretical equations and said that light is a form of a wave of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, this electromagnetic spectrum is a very big spectrum. It starts from X rays and gamma rays on one side and extends up to radio waves on the other side. X rays and gamma rays are very, very short wavelengths. So, they have very high frequencies and radio waves have got very long wavelengths and have got very slow frequencies or low frequencies. But from that end to this end or from this end to that end, the velocity of light is constant. It is roughly 300,000 kilometers per second. What does that mean? That if you were to switch on a torch, in one second the light beam would have traveled a distance of 300,000 kilometers in one second. The sun, our neighboring star which gives us life is at a distance of 150 million kilometers, an average distance and it takes light 8 minutes and 20 odd seconds to reach the earth. So, that is why light becomes very, very important as a messenger because some of the stars that we see are not only hundreds and thousands of kilometers away, but they are billions and billions of light years away from us. That means, it takes light billions of years to come from there to our eyes and when they do so, they carry messages. Suppose you see a star which is at a hundred billion light years distance, what you are seeing is, you are seeing the light which has traveled hundred billion years ago reach your eyes today. Does that give you any understanding? Well, let me explain. This is like reading a mystery novel from the end to the beginning. In astronomy, the closer the object is, light takes a very short time to reach. So, you already know what is the ending. But as you travel further and further away, light has taken longer and longer and longer and longer time to reach your eyes and so, it is going from the end towards the beginning. Surprisingly, Albert Einstein, you know is one of the great minds of the 20th century, received his Nobel Prize not for the theory of relativity, but to explain one very interesting phenomenon in light called photoelectric effect. And that was the beginning of the Xerox machine type of equipment when light of a certain intensity falls on certain metals like selenium for example, the electrical conductivity of selenium increases tenfold and so, it can be used for printing 
in the early days that was called the original Xerox machines. Nowadays we have different types of machines, but they are maintaining the name Xerox. Now, as I said light is a messenger. In the astronomical uh, in the astronomical field there are certain objects called black holes. They are objects of so high gravitational forces that even light traveling at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second cannot escape and therefore you cannot see them. And if you cannot see them the question arises how do you know they are there? Well, there are other indirect methods of finding out these objects by seeing how much of matter is being attracted, what is the temperature of the matter and so on. That is a different portion altogether of science, but black holes have been detected by material which is being captured by these objects into them and as they go towards it closer and closer they become very hot and start emitting light, x-rays etcetera from which we indirectly try to find out where the object is and what is its size, mass etcetera. All of us know and we have become so used to light that if the light should go off we suddenly become totally directionless. We do not know where to go, we bump into it and we, we will not be able to function properly because we are attuned to light. See how a blind man who from birth or during for some unfortunate reason if he goes blind, how difficult it is for him to function in a normal world. So, as a part of the mobile science activity for school children, we have the following uh, equipment with us. Over here you have a plane mirror. This also is a plane mirror. Okay. This is a translucent plastic slab, okay. a concave mirror, okay. glass prism, a power source, a light box and over here I have, I will just show it to you like this, I have a protractor with a mirror attached to it. Okay. Now, we can use this simple setup to study the various laws of light. This is a small contribution from the mobile science laboratory Hyderabad towards the international year of light, but I would like to assure you that the mobile science laboratory will continue to bring experiments in all subjects including light and maybe many more in light so that you will enjoy and I thank you for your patient hearing.